Dan Fixed back here, and I'm gonna be doing a crafted beer kit. But first, I wanna thank everybody who's ever supported me. I'm on over 14,000 views. I never thought I'd get this far, and it's all thanks to you, everybody who's ever viewed me on YouTube. Thank you. We're gonna be doing a crafted beer kit here tonight. Nothing too complex. We've got our buckets here, and it's not gonna be too hard. We've we've done this before, right? So here we've got the crafted beer kit. Comes in a bag, really nice. It uh, it does make it easier to get it out, and in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to use than uh, cans because uh, you can squeeze it. I mean, it's a little bit different. We got our survival scissors here. About 20 different tools in this. It is a thick plastic to cut through. You do need a good pair of scissors in it. But you don't need the whole thing cut open. So of course, more mess. It is a sectional bag. This is kind of strange. You open it up and you see inside of one partition that the uh, the syrup is in and then another partition on the other side the label side well it has all of your brewing ingredients in it's got the uh, the information uh, and all of the uh, instructions of course we don't really need that right we know what we're doing and it's got the ingredients. Here we've got uh, hops, and we've got the uh, the yeast packet. So we're gonna go ahead, open up that bag a little bit more. Yeah, it's gross and sticky, and you're gonna want to wash every thing that it touches af after it. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bucket. Yeah, yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, that's so thick. That is a lot of stickiness. And it's gonna take a while, take us a while. But what I like about bags is you can roll them up kind of the same way you used to do toothpaste or whatever. You can squeeze out a lot of that. Yeah, see? See the bean? Yeah, it gets... Yeah, there. A whole bunch more comes out that way. We're going to go take it over to the hot sink and uh, rinse some out. You're going to want to wash out what's left of this. On the sides, you're going to see a little bit of whatever. Um, they don't always turn out like this. Sometimes they're a little cleaner. Uh, this one's just a little... It's been picky. I don't know. It might be a heat thing. I'm no chemist, but I know that the heat in here will uh, will affect stuff. So we're gonna rinse it out with hot water.
We're still here over on the side. The sink's uh, not in view of the camera. I'm still here. Believe me, you don't want to see how many products I keep around my sink for my, uh, my luscious hair. <laughs> you don't want to wash out all that syrup. That goes straight in there. You're going to have a bunch of it sticking to the sides. I mean, it's whatever. Wash your hands off. You don't want dirty hands when you're messing with this stuff. I'm gonna add a little bit more water because uh, it just seems a little pasty. You're gonna want a gallon to mix with this uh, particular kit at the beginning. And uh, then I just take her lid. You don't even really need to put a seal on it properly. I just put two sides on it and it should be fine. Put in your stir. I use a uh, uh, a battery drill, it's a Black & Decker. Keeps it at a low speed. And I used to use a corded drill. But, it just had too much torque, too much power. Splashed all over the place. Made a lot of noise. I'm in an apartment, great, so. Give that a good stir so that it mixes with the, uh, the water. Now it's not gonna be just its uh, plain old uh, syrup. You're gonna open the, the lid and what you want to see is a good froth. Ah, oh, guess I'm gonna have to remove you. You're gonna want to see something like that, bunch of bubbles. You don't want to see the liquid through it. <laughs> but continuing on, we're gonna want to add uh, one kilo of sugar at this point. At least that's when I add it. So you use half the bag of a two two k bag. I just kind of hold it around here and then feel that. I'm not too precise with it. I don't measure stuff out that way. I always get a different kind of of whatever's going on. But I know what ha what's half, right? Like There we go. We've used half the bag. Less sweetener is, I find, a little bit better than more because too much will lead to overpressurization, right, from the carbonation. 
And you'll get exploding bottles. Nobody wants exploding bottles because then you need you know, clean it up, you got glass all over the place, and yeah, Seth, I'm talking right at you, you know it was your call. <laughs> So, next, we're going to add more water to that, just a little bit. Take down the froth. Oh, uh, that's just a, a personal preference, really. I put the lid back on. I only see a on two sides because it doesn't really need anything more. I put my stirring machine back in, which I made from my uh, two stainless steel uh, butter knives and a uh, uh, a stirring stick I got from uh, Eric and Bodega. It's a pretty pretty good uh, system. So that's properly stirred. That's awesome. We're going to add more water. I lost my scissors. Sorry, folks. So, we're going to add the last bit of water. And that adds up to full 23 liters, that's 5 gallons. You're going to see a froth on the top. You're going to take your 5 gram yeast packet that's going to be in foil. Well. <laughs> Survival scissors, they come apart, sorry. I lost one blade, that's why it took me a little bit. Find the other one. My bad! <laughs> Alright, this is what I find always is the most important part. You're gonna sprinkle the yeast on top as though it were salt on a meal. You want an even pouring of this fine powder all over the place. You're going to see lines in it, kind of like when those fruity frappuccino guys do their spicing on the top, but uh, 
you want to make it even. You want to you want to put it all over the foam because yeast settles in like kind of like a little miniature city kind of like they make their own like little habitat all over the the water. And what you're gonna want is a a dispersion of all of them. So after that's all done, you're gonna want to take your lid. You put that on your in your big old bucket there. That's fine. Seal that up. And what I do is I give her a twist, and then I know that the, all of the seal is locked because if it didn't twist, then it wouldn't be all uniform. We take your standard airlock, and of course this is made, the, the, the little top is with a, uh, a brew in the bag cap, but that doesn't really make that much of a difference. I, I just, I use them because I, I, use, I lose my lids a lot, and a uh, helpful hint, they are the same size. Uh, as long as you put a hole in them, you can use them. So I typically use like uh, a heated needle. Put the uh, put a hole in it, and then you can use them as the uh, the top lid for your uh, carboy airlocks that are uh, cylindrical. So that's all it is. The beer is done. It's it's finished. Uh, in about uh, seven to eight days, we're gonna take a look at it again, and then it goes back into bottles and with a little bit of sugar, right, uh, to prime it. But uh, that step, that step takes ages long. It's, it's boring. Uh, it's just me pressing a bottle over and over again with a cap and, and nobody wants to see that. So that was, that was brewing crafted, bre uh, craft, uh, fuck, crafted beer kit, damn. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. And uh, if if you enjoyed this video, please share, like. I'm on all sorts of different uh, social media platforms. I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, Reddit, Tumblr. You can support my channel if you do like what I uh, I do and you want to see more. You can support me on Patreon. Uh, and I'm on all sorts of other things, uh, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, all the rest of it. All the links are going to be down in the description. But that was Dan Fixed with another brew kit. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks a lot for watching.